Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. Today I would like to talk about Deadliest Warrior, the game. So finally, here we are with another historical evaluation of a game. Now I have talked about the um, Deadliest Warrior, the series, a little bit. I have done one of my debunking videos which was um, focused on the series and of course the series has a lot of historical misconceptions there are a lot of problems with the series if you want to look at it from a historical point of view not only for entertainment but before diving into this evaluation which I know that many of you were waiting for I would like to spend just a word for those people who do not belong to the community yet and I hope that you will and maybe misunderstand what we are trying to do with these series with these evaluations I know that it's a video game, so the primary function of a video game is to entertain, it needs to be fun. So this should not, should not be considered as a rant, but as a learning opportunity. That's what we want to do here. So we look at the game, we look at the characters, we see the Romans, we see the knights, we see the samurai, and then we just want to see and try to learn how the actual, real historical warriors, meaning Roman legionaries and, and, and knights and so forth, were. So it's a learning opportunity. We just educating ourselves. Deadliest Warrior the game, of course it's a fun game, I have to say that they did an excellent job with the game mechanics and gameplay. Um, I downloaded it, it's the first one, I'm, I understand there is a second one out there, I still haven't tried that one, but this one I have tried and it was fun. So the game is fun, I had some really fun evenings, I really like the idea of being able to, um, for example, move your shield and use it to, to protect yourself and uh, how you can have several weapons, you can use throwing weapons, but as you get closer you need to use actually close ranged and middle ranged weapons. It's fun, it's really really fun to play. But there are some historical inaccuracies, so let's, and some big ones as well, so let's have a look at these. Alright, so let's have a look at the these characters, at least the ones that I can talk about. Um, the first one is the Centurion here, so he's armed with a Gladius, Sparta, Lankia and Asta, and then we have the Pilum, he actually has two Pila, he's got two. Although I have to say that it would have been better if he had two Pilum of different size and weight, that would have been more accurate. Whereas in the game he actually has, if you choose the Pilum as a weapon, throwing weapon, then he would only have two Pilum of the same size. And then you can also choose the Plumbata, which is actually, it's correct, it's a throwing weapon that they actually started using in the late empire. But what, where the problem is, is the armors that you can choose. First of all, this one here, you see it's saying Lorica Segmentata, but this is not a Lorica Segmentata, it's a Lorica Hamata, meaning male armor. The Lorica segment. the only thing he has belonging to a Lorica Segmentata is the shoulder plates. As a matter of fact, it looks very odd because he's wearing the shoulder plates of a Lorica Segmentata on top of a Lorica Hamata, but still the main armor that he's wearing is male armor, Lorica Hamata. So again, normally centurions are depicted with Lorica Hamata most of the time. What he's wearing as a protection for his torso is correct, including the medals, although in this case it, they don't really look like medals, they just look like circles of metal. But yes, the main problem is this mixture. I think it would have looked a lot better without those shoulders from Lorica Segmentata, or actually may, having him wear a full Lorica Segmentata could have been interesting. The helmet, he has got the crest, which is a horizontal crest, and it, it's not perpendicular to the helmet, which is correct. Um, that's the kind of crest that the centurions would wear that would distinguish them in battle from other legionaries. Now, let's move to the other one. It says Lorica Hamata, so this should have been male armor, but he's wearing a scale armor, which in Latin would have been Lorica Squamata. Now, it's true that Lorica Squamata was used by the Romans, the problem is, why is he wearing Lorica Squamata, but they tell us it's Lorica Hamata, even if you look at the description, actually, which here is in Italian, but it tells us that it's made of rings, um, interlocked rings, a mesh of rings, and it says it's male armor and everything, but this is clearly not male armor, so there is a big problem. And again, we have the shoulder plates of the Lorica Segmentata. I understand that they like the style of the shoulder plates of Lorica Segmentata, but then just put a full Lorica Segmentata. It makes no sense to have a, the shoulder, only the shoulder plates of Lorica Segmentata and it actually does not look good in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. The helmet again, we have a variation in the crest, 
This time the crest is perpendicular to the helmet, it's a vertical crest, and that's a problem because we are using a centurion, aren't we? But that kind of crest would have been worn by normal standard legionaries and only in non-battle situations, so during parades. Um, a centurion would never wear a crest like that because that's a crest of a normal standard infantry soldier. Now one thing that I'm not really happy about is the size of the scutum of the Roman legionary. It's too small. On the other hand, the Spartan, as you can see, the oblon, and I am not pronouncing the H here on purpose because I'm using the Greek word, um, the oblon is good in, in its size. I don't know why the legionary scutum is so small. So just to give you an overall idea, this is the size of a scutum, and as you can see, it protects me all the way down to the ankles, all the way up to my shoulder, so that when I fight, this will be my primary line of defense. If you get past this, then there is my armor. And I also think it looks actually good. It looks better if it's bigger. So I just don't understand that choice. Now moving to the knights, we have swords, maces, halberds, pickaxe. Now I'm quite happy with the weapons. It's, there is a differentiation between light crossbow and heavy crossbow. Now it's telling us that the first armor that we see here is a coat of plates. It could be but the thing is that we still see male armor there, so I would have called it male armor. And what he's wearing, it doesn't really look like a coat of plates, but it looks like a surcoat. A surcoat was simply covering male. Uh, it was used uh, all the way up to the 14th century. It had several purposes. One was distinguishing the person in battle, the other being, and it would have to end then, it would just protect the armor underneath from sun direct sunlight, from the rain, and so forth. So the fact that he's wearing this on top of male armor kind of makes him look like a 12, 11 to 12th century. If he had a breastplate underneath, then it would have been more of a 14th century knight. Of course, um, a extra coat of plate would have the plates sewn underneath the actual coat. So it could be, I mean, I, I can't really see underneath it. I'm just saying that at a first glance, it, it looks more like a male armor with a surcoat. And the helmet is a early example of a pot helm or great helm so that looks okay perhaps the opening for the eyes are a bit too big because a knife or a dagger maybe even a sword could easily go through that the second weapon armor that we can choose it tells us it's a maximilian armor of course here we are way in the 15th century problem is that it does not look much like a maximilian armor we have no fluting and it's interesting because in the description it does does talk about fluting at the end there, but I didn't see any fluting. Yeah, there is a little bit on the top of the breastplate, but the Maximilian armor should be entirely fluted, exception being only the greaves. And the helmet. I mean, with a Maximilian ha armor, we should have either a Maximilian helmet, which it would be this one here, or a salet, a German salet. This one that we see here, it looks similar to an armet, which was wrongly closed. It looks if you look at the cheek plates actually did not were not closed properly before lowering hinging down the visor. So it looks like the visor is stuck and the cheek plates cannot be closed. So I would rather choose the the, the, the previous one, the male armor set with a great helm because that looks a lot more close to how it was supposed to be. And it, and it's completely open on, on the throat in the throat area, so that actually that makes it absolutely pointless. Now, moving to the Spartan now. Well, I have to say, weapons, Xiphos, we have Sarisa, we have Dori. Um, so I'm quite happy with the fact also that they have used Greek names, although I don't understand why they did not use the Greek word for javelin. Then they just, in this case, I have it in Italian. I suppose it would be in English in your versions. But then again, what can you do? Uh, Linothorax. Well, we have a choice in the, with the armor with the Spartan. I'm actually quite happy, not 100% happy, but I'm quite happy because we can choose between Linothorax or the bronze armor. Now, I'm very happy with this because at least he's wearing armor. And considering what Hollywood has given us, you know, this impression that Spartans went, went to war naked, which makes absolutely no sense, a Spartan would be armored. So uh, this already is a big improvement. I'm very happy with that. Um, the Linothorax looks somewhat similar to what an actual Linothorax would look like. Not perfect, but it's it's okay. Again, I'm very happy that they that he's wearing armor. The Corinthian helmet. Um, it's true that there were several various uh, types, but I would have chosen personally a 
a more of a closed one rather than, than this one which is very open in the face. With a bronze cuirass, I'm very happy. I, I can't really complain. So, apart from, so the helmet is the same, so I think I've already made my point clear. Now, with the Viking, with the weapons, we've got swords, we've got axes, of course he's got axes. Um, but one thing that I'm not very happy is that they should have spears, because that was very commonly used, a, a spear and a shield, that was a primary weapon of Vikings. But here it's just a throwing weapon, and I'm not very happy with that. You should be able to, you should be able to fight with that, because that would be more historically accurate. And web armors now. It tells us you, you can choose between a lamella armor and male armor. Now, with the male armor, I'm very happy. Again, I understand the shoulder pauldrons, they place them there because they look cool. They do look cool, but I, I don't think they are historically accurate considering that in the Viking Age, plate armor was still not there. Just male armor would have been a lot better. I would have preferred it. The helmet is nice. They did not place the horns, and I prefer that personally. I know that some of you will say that the, they have found something with horns. I still do not think that Vikings uh, used horns as a whole. I think that some of them perhaps did, uh, maybe in ceremonial situations, but I think this helmet is quite accurate and I'm very happy with that. With the so-called lamella armour that we have here, we still have a male coif or coif, however you want to pronounce it, but I would have closed it because the throat area is completely exposed or at least close the throat area. This is very exposed. The nasal helmet looks okay. Um, probably not perfect, but I can't really expect perfect representation. It's still a kind of a fantasy approach to the game, so it's okay, I suppose. And what can I say? Lamella armor needs, deserves a huge video. It's okay, but I would have rather hit, had him just wear male armor or thick layers of clothing. But I will talk about lamella armor on a dedicated video. Ultimately, the samurai, um, we have a choice between katana and nodachi. I know that the weapons are not in proportions here, they're just showing us, but uh, normally the handle of a nodachi should be quite a lot bigger than the handle of a katana, which was already quite, the grip is already quite long. Also, the nodachi was never really used in one-to-one -one combat, it was only used to f cut down um, enemy cavalry and then you would just ditch them and use your katana, but again, I understand that they look cool because of anime. It's fine that, they, that you can choose. I always fight with the katana though. Then you can choose between Naginata and Yari. That is fine. I'm very happy with that. You have Daikyu and Hankyu. They have done some research here. I, I like it that they put Yumi first. Yumi does mean um, bow in Japanese. Of course, when you put it in, the, you know, in a compound, the same character for Yumi is read Q, so when you say Dai, meaning great, Dai Q, the, the pronunciation will be Q, so this is correct, and I'm happy with that. Armor, the two possibilities, they actually look very similar, whereas I think since with the knight they have differentiated between different centuries, I would have done the same thing with the samurai personally. I like the mask, and I like the kabuto, the helmet, although this one here, I would have gone for the for the half moon uh, thing, a bit taller, I think it would have been better looking, and maybe on the second one I would have placed the horns, that would have been just my personal choice. Now, with the ninja, the situation is a complete mess. We have Ninja Tor, which we know it's not historically accurate, um, most likely. So, uh, this is the first problem. I would have just had a, a normal um, katana, perhaps, or something like that, or a shorter katana. Now, for the armor department, of course, it does not have armor. It's one of those web classes that do not use armor. I would have gone for blue, dark blue, rather than full black. If you want to know about, about how an actual ninja looked, historically speaking, you can go and check out my dedicated video. The second one is a monstrosity. I don't like it, I don't like the way it looks. If you like it, it's fine, play it, enjoy it, but please don't think that actual ninjas looked like this, because they didn't. It would have been nice, I think, to have him second uh, costume. It would have been nice if he was wearing something to disguise himself, like the monk, like looking like a, a Buddhist monk, or looking like a merchant or a peasant, like something like that would have been more interesting. Now one last thing I would like to say is that there is a problem of inaccuracy with the Viking's shield as well. If you look at the way he's holding the shield, it looks as if the shield was directly um, on his left arm, but that's not the way you would actually hold a Viking shield. Mine is actually not historically accurate, I need to get a new one because this kind of striping is for kite shields, for example, medieval shields. Um, the actual 
Viking shield should have an opening here, hence the boss to protect my hand, and I should be able to hold it, and I should hold it in the middle. Alright then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, did, please thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings.